with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to Christ our Lord. Jesus came to Nazareth where he had grown up and went according to his custom into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. Jesus said to them, Today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. Good evening, family. So, I laughed right when we were reading St. Paul's letter to the Romans, because I was like, Romans has been on my mind all day. And also, I wanted to preach on the Holy Spirit. I was with um, some St. George parishioners recently, and they were saying, like, man, like, we don't preach about the Holy Spirit enough. The Holy Spirit that has been given to us, the life of God. Um, so I'm like, yeah, let's keep talking about the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, the one who is love, the love of God poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. And so it made me laugh because Romans chapter 8, it says we do not know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit intercedes for us with inexpressible groanings, which means that the Holy Spirit is interceding and teaching and guiding us in how to pray, how to come into relationship with God, family. We come into relationship with God through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that is in us and working throughout this world. I was just talking to someone recently about how they're struggling in their relationship with God. It's like they were so strong, but now they're like slowly, slowly like getting worldly, getting materialistic. And like, I get it because it's like, it's hard out there. And what that leads to, when you like start getting a little more materialistic, it leads to you thinking that God is not personal and God is not active and that God is not in your midst. And so that will also lead you to just feeling like you have to serve God, that God is your master, I'm his slave, and I have to be good enough for him. And nowhere in that relationship is love. So I told that person, I said, you need to come back to love. Because if we are choosing a God who will make us a slave, a slave to righteousness, okay? Righteousness, which is good. Righteousness is like good things. But we become slaves to righteousness when we see God as a father who is yelling at us or expecting us to do so much. And that will lead us to seeing God as a buzzkill. Like, God, oh, I, why? And that's the trap. You're not seeing love. Our faith is not about saying no to all of these things. It's about saying yes to love. God's love poured into us so that we can love others. And I don't know, maybe you've experienced it, but when you love others authentically, with a pure heart, with a servant's heart, with a heart that wants their good, when you feel that, not just feel it, but when you do it, there's meaning, there's purpose. When you live only for yourself, in materialism, it might feel good. For how long? And then what? Until you die? 
it's still going to die. What lives forever? I've been praying with uh, Ba'utha. Ba'utha's coming up. I want you to start thinking in the next, what, I think 10 days. Ba'utha's coming. Start preparing your heart. Lord, what are you calling me to? Lent is just two weeks after that. Start preparing your heart. Oh man, I just lost my train of thought. It's okay. Yeah, it's gone. Sorry. <laughs> just, yeah, it's gone. I'm, I can't even try anymore. <laughs> But, um, oh, so Lent, when on Ash Wednesday in the Roman Catholic Church, they, they say, when they put ashes on your forehead, repeat after me. They say, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Okay, it's like, welcome to the church, right? It's like, wow. Um, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Okay, but what is not dust? your spirit, your soul, that's going to live forever. And is the Holy Spirit that gives that soul light. It is love that gives that soul meaning and purpose and vision. And so Jesus says, he opens the scroll, he reads from Isaiah, and he says what all of us should say. So I want you to repeat after me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me. God's done that to you. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you, and he has anointed you. For what? To bring good news. To proclaim freedom. To give sight to the blind. To let the oppressed go free. And to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord He's talking about the year of Jubilee in Leviticus that is a year of mercy. This is your call as well and mine. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me for a mission. Amen? When we don't have a mission, life is like... So ask yourself, I'm doing all of these things even religious things. For what? Why are you doing it? I was just talking to somebody recently and they were saying, Father, I'm spending too much money. I'm like, okay, well, what's the point of saving it? He's like, I feel like I don't really have a point right now. All right, that's probably, that's your bigger problem. For what? Why do we do what we do? Is there a meaning and a purpose to your life? There was to Jesus's, and it was you.